Good evening and welcome to The Strand. I'm Christina Foxley, Director of Events, and I'm pleased to welcome Tracy Jackson, here tonight to discuss her new book, Between a Rock and a Hot Place, Why 50 is Not the New 30. 50 arrives with more baggage than Paris Hilton on a press tour, and Between a Rock and a Hot Place offers a hilarious, bare-knuckled, and ultimately practical appraisal of what it really means to be a 50-year-old woman today. The word is out about Between a Rock and a Hot Place. Tracy recently appeared on the Today Show with both Meredith Vera, Vera and with K Kathy Lee and Hoda. The book was selected as Oprah's top ten titles to pick up in February, and she will appear on CNN this, this weekend. A screenwriter for 17 years, Tracy Jackson has written and sold films to all the major studios. Her most recent writing credits include Confessions of a Sh uh, Shopaholic and Lucky Ducks, a feature-length documentary that she also produced and directed. Jackson blogs on her own website, tracyjacksononline.com, and the Huffington Post. Following her presentation, Tracy will take your questions. She'll then stick around to sign her book for you, which you can purchase downstairs on your way out of the store. Please join me in welcoming the incredibly talented Tracy Jackson to the Strand. I'm warning you right now. Thank you all for showing up in this cold night. Is it working? Can you hear me? Hear all this? Uh, it's great. It's a pleasure to be at the Strand. Up it, turn it up. There we go. Better? Yeah. Testing. Very good. Um, this book, I'm going to read a chapter about tonight about men, but I want to just talk a little bit about the whole genesis of this book, which is when I turned 50, and everyone, I kept hearing all over the place, 50 is the new 30, 50 is the new 30, you're 30, you're 30, you're 30, and nothing in my life remotely resembled my life at 30. So I decided I would take a look at, at what this really meant. Now, people will say things like, oh, it's so depressing that you're saying this because we all want to be 30 and now you're bumming us out. And, and so I, I, I try and tell everyone this is not a depressing book. It's actually a funny book, and it's actually a really honest book. And what I try and get across is that it's not that we're not 30, which, well, I'm not. I don't know any out there. Maybe you're. Uh, but that if you make the right decisions, if you make decisions based on being 30 when you're 50, you're going to make a lot of really bad decisions. And nobody really gives us a GPS from 50 to 80. We're all going to live, actuarially, we're all going to live probably into our late 70s, 80s. Everyone tells you how to live your life from 20 to 50. You know, we all have this kind of game plan, whatever you, whatever you end up doing. There's this little plan in place that you've pretty much been practicing since you were a kid. You hit 50, and for a lot of people, the roof caves in in many different parts of their lives. So... In the book I t cover, I'm going to put this here. I cover everything from, I do cover menopause, so it's not your, a menopause book. I cover sex. I cover ageism in the workplace. I cover death. I cover health. I cover empty nest. I, I pretty much cover taking care of your old parents. All of it humorously, all of it through my own scrim. So I cover everything. So if there's any questions you have afterwards, uh, because they're essays for the most part and they're continual, there might be subjects that you think that I haven't addressed, which I actually have. These are questions that came up last night at the reading I did in D.C. The chapter I'm going to do tonight is actually, though I am married, my husband's sitting there, and used to work at the Strand. Um, I went on Match.com because I decided that if I were to be single today, what would, what would I do? And actually, how was I going to cover this topic? Because there are a lot of s single women in their 50s. And I thought, well, this is, you know, something that needs to be looked at. And if I were single today, I would probably end up going online. So the chapter is called Maddening Men. And I will read you excerpts from my adventures on Match.com. We can all hear? Okay. I got that there. Okay. And I'm warning you about that lost little sticky thing. Okay. There. No. <gasps> okay. Here's in Hollywood. You're talking about. Okay. Also, my eyesight, of course, at 50 is not great. At 30, okay, it had maddening men. In olden times, sacrifices were made at the altar, a practice that still continues. It's a quote by Helen Rowland. At 30, I was coming to the end of my exasperating decade of dating and trying to find a mate. At 51, I'm happily married to my second husband. 
I went seamlessly from one marriage to the other. Well, actually, there were plenty of seams. In fact, there were rips and tears, two divorces, moves across the country, breaking up two homes, adultery, and many hurt feelings along the way. But it felt like a small price to pay in order to avoid dating in between. That means I've not actually been on the market or in the bars. Now it would be online in 20 years. So I have as much knowledge about dating as I do about money, except I eventually got better with dating. This is what I remember about dating. It was fun in my teens, as it was new and one of the re first really grown-up experiences I got to take part in. In my 20s, it was always very fraught with tension. When I was young and the stakes weren't very high, that is, I didn't care if the relationship ended up in a permanent union, there was always the thrill of the new, the excitement of going out. Whom would you meet? Who would hit on you? Whom would you go home with? And who might hang around for a while? Every time you walked out the door, there was a chance something could happen. And pretty often it did. Many times it ended in disaster. Of course, sex was fun. I think that is what makes young dating so memorable. The sex is hot, even with people you don't like that much. But if you did like someone, there were those endless next days and weeks of will he call, should I call, why didn't he call, should I have ordered the fish when he said he was a vegetarian? Should I have ordered steak when he said he was from Omaha? If I'd worn the red dress, maybe he would have called. If I hadn't talked about my last boyfriend so much, maybe he would have called. If I were a cat lover and not a dog lover, he might have called. If I were a dog lover and not a cat lover, he might have called. It was endless. It was torture. It eventually tainted the sex. It eventually tainted everything. By the time I hit 39 and my marriage was intolerable, I realized I needed to get out of it by 40 in the hopes of making a new life with someone else and possibly having another baby. I worked very well under deadlines, so I set a very strict one for myself. I had to be out and single by my 40th birthday, and I was, mostly. I was somehow not single, but I was, in, I was with the person who was the love of my life. I knew that if I did that, what many of my unhappy friends were doing, which was to hang in there and stay in the marriage for my daughter's sake, by the time she was out of the house, I would be 50, and my chances of finding some would be more difficult, and, my, and conceiving another child would be out of the question. So I did the selfish thing, and I left my first husband. This caused my daughter to accuse me of hogging all the happiness. But I knew that if I was miserable for a decade, I would only end up making her equally unhappy, which would be merely spreading around the misery. That's the sticky problem. In your 50s, there's still time to start over. Look, people build new lives in their 70s. I wouldn't want to have to do it today, but it's done. You're not going to see your golden anniversary, but if you start from scratch in your 50s, and if you both live out your life expectancy, you can be married for 30 years. It's not the majority of the stories out there, but nearly every week in the New York Times wedding pages, you see a couple in their 50s. It can happen to them. It can happen to you. Is it going to be as easy as it was at 30? Of course not, but you know that going in. The biggest problem for women in their 50s is that men their age often want girls 20 years younger. Yet another case where 50 is so not the new 30. You can be the hottest 50-year-old in the state, but as far as men are concerned, you're still not 30. The biggest complaint I hear from women my age is they feel invisible. I completely relate to this. You get to a certain age and men just stop paying attention. It's as if you do not exist at all. You go from guys turning their heads to get a peek at you when you walk in the room to no one even bothering to look in your direction. They're oblivious to how potently their different indifference affects you. But every non-glance is a reminder of the ones that came before and the fact that they're no longer coming your way. I miss the construction workers whistling and yelling sit on my face blondie. Despite the fact I always studiously ignored them, I secretly enjoyed the validation. Now when I walk by a construction site, all I hear is, Hey, Nico, will you get me another sub and a soda? Ah, uh, the old days. I would wish all I, all I would give for another sit-on-my-face blondie. While talking to women about the brave new world of dating, my curiosity got the best of me. Most of the single people I know, from 30 to 60, have dabbled in the land of Internet dating. And this ranges from the really hot properties to the people who might not have much luck on the open market. We all have new friends who have found love through their mouse and keyboard. My sister-in-law met her husband of 12 years on a music lover's website back before everyone was signing up for Instamates. 
So with my husband's blessing, and in the name of research, I decided I would take the 21st century approach to finding the perfect man. I would live like a single 50-year-old online and see what was out there. I would sign myself up for one of the 800 online dating services. If I did find myself single, I would surely end up taking a stab at this. So why not give it a shot? I'm not the only one. Roughly 40 million American singles use online dating and social network sites to meet new people. Three million Americans have found long-term relationships or marriage through a dating site. One of those sites, eHarmony, has estimated it was responsible for 43,051 marriages last year alone. That means a total of 236 eHarmony users got married every day. 17% of online daters, nearly 3 million Americans, have turned online dates into a long-term relationship or marriage. One in eight people married last year in the United States met online. To put it in perspective, in 2008, the last year for which stats are available, 34,017 people died in car crashes. So your chances of getting married from a hookup on eHarmony outweigh your chances of dying in a car crash by 26.5%. Those are pretty decent odds. I went with Match.com for this some reason because for some reason it felt like I was reaching for Kleenex instead of a generic brand. Despite its success rate, eHarmony sounds like an acapella group and it costs a lot more than Match. Plus, it feels like you have to fill out more forms to sign up with them than you do to join the CIA. Jay dates very popular, but though I was born a Jew, I don't practice. And since I was already swimming in a pool of lies, I didn't want to travel further into the deep end. Okay, here it goes. Sorry, guys, I, I lost this. It was with my sticker. All right. I'm so sorry. Okay. The photo I tried to upload, now I'm, I'm just going to go back up here. I forget the sticker. I'm going to read longer. I'm not easy under, to please under the best of circumstances, so I went with my many reservations. But as I posted on my profile page, I'm curious and open for new adventures. The first turnoff was when I couldn't use my regular name as my username. It was taken. They offered me three others, Tracy 67548, which sounded like one of those early AOL addresses or a prison number, Hot Mamita, which gave off too much of a Latin vibe, and Paltry Tracy. This last was an odd choice, considering the dictionary defines paltry as worthless, trivial, miserable, insignificant, and irrelevant. The only adjective they missed was invisible. I wondered if it had something to do with my age. Did the fact I was 50 and online looking for love automatically render me miserable? The truth is 30% of 80 million boomers are single. They can't all be paltry. And what does that say about my sense of self? Would you want to date a girl, pardon me, woman, who described herself as irrelevant? I decided to stack the deck against myself. Paltry Tracy was online and looking for love. Once I got online, I did not feel invisible any longer. I felt like an imposter. And that, was part, and, and that I was part of something slightly surreal. But invisible, I was not. That may be one of the more appealing aspects of online dating. From the moment you sign up, you are back in some form of the game. You can go out every night without leaving your desk or getting out of your PJs. People you never would have the opportunity to meet come flying into your home via the computer. Over a period of four days, 329 guys looked at my profile. I was being checked out. But of those 329, only 25 thought enough of me to follow through. Only 25 found me worthy of a second glance. Now, I'm one of those people who if I get three compliments and one criticism, I focus on the criticism. So true to form, as opposed to looking more closely at the men who supposedly were interested in me, I had to go prowling through the more than 300 who had rejected me. Whom was I not good enough for? Many were way older, some even in their late 60s. One was a mortician. And one of them actually referred to his favorite van vacation spot as Cancun, C-A-N-C-O-O-N. If nothing else, I could have helped him with his spelling, but I guess these guys don't roam these sites looking for tutors. Once I decided the ones who rejected me weren't my type either, I could focus on...